Hello everyone, my name is Eugenio Colorcello. Today we're going to talk about uh, some of uh, computational neuroscience and learning uh, basic information um, that one might want to use um, when studying artificial and robotic vision systems. We will start uh, first um, uh, trying to figure out why do we have a visual system? Um, you know, our eyes, uh, the eyes of humans, have evolved for different reason, uh, and not necessarily to just look at a nice uh, multi-megapixel picture from your camera phone. Um, eyes have evolved to study the environment um, and to figure out uh, important features on the environment. There are sensory structure capabilities of spatial vision, imaging the environment, no matter how crude the image is. As my thesis advisor, Andreas Andreas, used to say, the most important things about a visual system is just to extract a few bits, a few amount of information in the right place at the right time. Is there something interesting in the environment? Uh, in a specific class of object, what, where it is and what it is, those are really the question that uh, the human visual system or any other animal visual system that have uh, evolved um, to really uh, answer. Um, and in this class we're going to talk about the principle of computational neuroscience about uh, mainly uh, visual system in, uh, uh, in humans, but this applies really to any visual system, no matter how crude uh, it might be. <coughs> so, when we talk about the usual vi the human visual system, uh, at least uh, for the purpose of this course and, uh, and class and for the purpose of artificial vision system, um, I want to focus on, uh, on a few uh, key elements. Um, we're going to take a look at eyes that have some specific property to report the visual information to the brain. Um, usually, you know, the brain can be divided into the, at least the visual cortex, which corresponds, you know, is thought to be about almost a third of the entire human brain. Um, has many different areas. Um, we're going to focus on the one that um, are in blue here on the slides. Uh, but as you can see from, um, you know, diagram from Simon Torp, retina takes input. After 20, 40 milliseconds, it passes them to another uh, nucleus in the brain, the lateral geniculate nucleus, uh, which takes you know another 30, 50, you know 30 to 50 milliseconds later, and passes the information to the primary visual cortex, which is called V1. <coughs> um, then this information is passed to area visual cortex area two. Uh, and then, uh, you know, usually the pathway to identify object is uh, fo flows from V1, visual area 2, visual area 4, which reports intermediate visual features, and we'll see in a few slides. And then it will go into the um, inferotemporal cortex, IT, um, where objects in the scene is deconstructed into elements only then the brain is going to notify the prefrontal cortex so the aware part of your brain about what um, is being seen um, and based on that you might decide to do um, some motion command that control some muscle some muscles in your body um, but you know it could stop at the prefrontal cortex just to be aware of the environment for example so in this course, we're going to look mainly at uh, um, eyes and then this pathway, um, which is the um, ventral pathway of the visual system that sort of recognize objects, which is the most important thing that we're going to study in this course, really. So I wanted to give you some uh, information and some ideas about how um, our uh, brain and nervous system um, can basically um, compute features that allow us to understand what the world is about. Before we delve into that, I want to give you a tool that is uh, 
some kind of words that are used very often in neuroscience and also now in artificial vision and robotic vision because you know many of these algorithms are inspired by neuroscience this tool is the receptive fields so what is a receptive field i'll tell you in a very simple the simplest way i can i can say um, so receptive field basically are an aggregate of information if you think about a bunch of cells that could be any kind of cells um, these in, these cells are going to get um, some specific input you know for example this could be <coughs> neurons in uh, in your eyes or detectors in your eyes um, and um, each one of them is going to see something different um, and uh, but they're going to pass the information to one or multiple neurons let's say one so um, the way they pass this information this information is aggregated together so that it gives an input to uh, the next the neuron the next layer uh, it's called the receptive field um, so what you know really this reminds is that uh, uh, each one of these neurons is connected to an, another neuron in the next layer um, in a certain way so this way these lines will have a certain strength there's going to be uh, an operation here that is performed because none of none of these things might be equal uh, if the input were all equal this would correspond to some kind of averaging but it doesn't have to be as we'll see so what uh, this operation does what we refer with the receptive field is basically this neighborhood operation where you take uh, a bunch of inputs, a lot of inputs, and this is really the receptive field of this neuron, is what whatever neurons here um, can change uh, the input to, to this neuron. This is the receptive field. You can think of it as a, um, a local boat or a sampling where uh, this neuron samples from all of these other neurons. Or and, uh, and receive an answer, or um, this uh, this neuron, all these neurons here in the neighborhood can vote to basically propagate some information to the next layer. <coughs> and receptive fields are are everywhere in in sensory processing areas of the brain and the nervous system. Uh, there are receptive fields in your eyes. So for example, if you're seeing a line, a line is composed by a bunch of dots, for example, these dots could uh, make, there are neurons, for example, that are just able to see dots, um, but uh, combined together, if we combine together all of these elements, uh, then the next neuron, neuron is gonna be able to uh, see a line because it sees whether there's dots in all of this, uh, in this area here. Um, in the retina could be that many photoreceptors are combined together to give rise to uh, one response from one of the ganglional cells, the output of the retina. Um, in, um, um, in, the sens in other sensory touch, for example, some uh, neurons in the, in the cortex uh, uh, could be um, sensitive to a vast area of your finger, for example, and that's uh, what is displayed here is the receptive field um, in different uh, or different kind of um, sensory input like pain, touch, vibration, or uh, or heat detectors. Um, when uh, we talk about receptive fields, we should also talk about artificial receptive fields because we're going to try to emulate those receptive fields in computer programs. And uh, this is done usually by employing an ensemble of neurons um, as an input. Uh, so you could have a matrix that represent values of a neuron or of an image or, or, of, or some kind of a map, you know, touch map or something. Uh, <coughs> there's going to be a voting scheme uh, that represents uh, basically these connections, um, which we call kernel or convolutional kernel. Uh, which is going to take uh, all this neighborhood here to generate only a single output, you know, um, 
so each kernel, each sets of connection generates a single output, but there could be multiple sets of connection that generate multiple output maps. So you see that there's a neighborhood and, and one output, and there's a voting scheme or a connection scheme that uh, decides you know, which one of these units have more importance uh, to um, get information that we want out here. We often call the, this uh, convolution operation, which you, will remind, you might remember from uh, your mathematical classes. Um, and I would uh, strongly recommend you that uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, that you really go read about the um, convolutions again. Um, convolutions um, are really, you know, a receptive field for us, and in fact, we're going to use them throughout the classes. So I wanted to uh, tell you that in the case of an image, an image, for example, when it's represented in a computer, um, it's just a bunch of numbers, and uh, so the input image here uh, is this bunch of this set of numbers that you see here. A convolutional kernel will do some operation that will bring up some response. For example, you might want to find um, an edge, a line, or uh, some features about the, that part of the image. And more, more on this, um, we will uh, we will see more of that 